You know, like, look, in, in basketball, there's an expression, and it goes like this. Every bad team has a leading score. You ever heard that one before? Every bad team has a leading score. Be, because what happens is you sit and you watch. I remember I was, I've been doing this a while now, right? I've been doing this a while. And there was a time when Evan Turner was averaging 17 points a game. Uh, I think for the Philadelphia 76ers, this is back when the Sixers were tanking. He was averaging 17 a game. He gets traded at the trade deadline to the Indiana Pacers. And the Pacers are a playoff team. This is back when the Pacers were pushing the Cavs in the Eastern Conference. And he goes from 17 a game to, and they can't even have him on the floor. Right? Because the roles are so different. The level of basketball is so different. And you start to ask yourself, like, wait a second. Does the coach an idiot? He doesn't know he was scoring 17 a night? Over the, or is he the best player on a bad team? And that's really what we're going to find out about Matt Stafford. Right? Matt Stafford has been in the league now for over a decade. Over a decade. Over a decade. He's thrown 282 touchdown passes, passed for over 45,000 yards, including um, when he's been healthy. When he's been healthy, he's thrown for over 4,000 yards every year for the last 10 years except for one. Crazy, right? Threw 4,000 yards this year, 5,000 yards back when he had uh, Calvin Johnson. He completed a league-high 435 passes when he's 24 years old. I mean, that was Calvin Johnson's year where he set the all-time yardage mark for receiving yards. Part of it was they were a bad team. Now, they haven't always been bad, and the truth is that the narrative about the, the Lions being like the worst franchise, like, look, they, in, they went through a four-year stretch where they were 11-5, and 7-9, and 9-7, and 9-7. And the last, two, last three years have not been good, right? Um, but this is, this is the big question. We talked about golf going back to, um, we talked about golf going back to last, you know, going back to last year, what went so wrong. And those same Rams people that I talked to are like, man, he really, he fits McVay a whole lot better. Fits McVay a whole lot better. All right. Not only is his wife, uh, friends with or related to McVeigh's wife or girl, whatever. Uh, but it's more, he's never really played in an advanced offense. Daryl Bevel, some of that stuff they did this year is close, but never played. This is the man. If we had a great quarterback to go with a great system, we would have a great team. Is Matt Stafford a great quarterback? He checks a lot of the boxes for what a great quarterback should look like. A great quarterback should feel like he's got experience, positive and negative. He's played with bad teams and rescued them. He played with some good teams and been a little bit more conservative. But, you know, this is the, the ultimate test. This is, it's like if Brad Beal was traded to the Clippers, would he be a 34-a-game night or would he be a 20-night 20, 20 guy? You know, if Brad Beal was on a reasonable team, and I know like Brad Beal, some of the video last night where it looked like he was not, he was checked out in the first half before he dropped 41 points. It's like he was trying to make a point at some point in the first half about just not playing. That, that's what you've always wondered. What would that look like over there? What would it look like if that guy who puts up those numbers played for a legit good team? I mean, this is kind of, look, Dan Marino had a lot of this. Did, Dan, did the Miami Dolphins not run the football because they couldn't run the football? Or did they not run the football because Dan Marino had the bad, bad wheels, had the torn Achilles tendon and couldn't move, and so they had to be from the shotgun? It's, now it's hard to run from the shotgun. Back then it was almost impossible. Almost impossible. Wh- which is it? You know, which is it? It's the Phillip Rivers, right? Is Phillip Rivers a guy who just puts up stats on – because they're losing or is he a guy who he's the only reason that they're not losing for, by more? It's a hard question to ask, but I think everybody thinks that they have a couple of dynamic defensive players. Granted, they're going to have to have a new defensive staff because their coordinator is now the coach of the LA chargers, but you got arguably the best player in football on your defensive line. You have one of, if not the best cover corner in football in Jalen Ramsey. 
you have a dynamic offensive coach, a rebuild offensive line, a tremendous young running back, and some quality wide receivers, although they clearly need a burner. That's something they'll probably get in the draft, late in the draft, or in free agency. But if Matt Stafford is really a dude, he will look like a dude with this offense. What would that look like if he was coached by a great coach? What would it look like if he was in a dynamic offense instead of that he was in in Detroit? That's the question. Or is one of the reasons they were doo-doo is one of the reasons they couldn't run the football because he loved to throw it and he wasn't committed to running the football. Is one of the reasons that they always had to throw it because he turned the football over too much and he took too many chances. Or did he take too many chances because they weren't any good? You know how we find that out? Granted, it won't be a huge sample size, but we'll find that out with the L.A. Rams this upcoming year. To me, that's, that's the other side of this trade. Byer, where are you on uh, Matt Stafford coming in? Like, if you had to uh, put, if you if you had to put a stake in the ground and go, like, this is, this is, this is who I am. Music. What about you? Are you, are you? Do you think it will work? Do you think it'll be pronouncedly better? Uh, I think I think it'll work. I think they will be better with Matt Stafford. I. I I feel like with Goff, the part of the frustration, and maybe it has to do with what you were talking about with the work ethic issues, was they feel as though they've officially reached their peak with Jared Goff, even though he's only at a certain age, to where it's like, hey, we got to a Super Bowl, and it didn't look pretty once we got there, and everything seemed to go right for us that season, and if everything doesn't go right, we may never get back, and they feel as though they can't bet on Jared Goff getting any better, and they can't bet on everything going right for them in another season, so it's almost like the... The devil you know versus the devil you don't, and they think that they can get more out of Stafford. Yeah, yeah. Byer, where are you on on uh, on Matt Stafford? And is yeah. he was he part of the problem in Detroit, or is he the solution? It's funny because you said, uh, you know, will it work? Uh, will they be better? And I actually think like they're two different things. Like I think that they're better. I don't think I don't think that if you had Matthew Stafford against Green Bay, that the Rams win that game. In the in the playoffs, yes, and but but, wait, wait, but but let me let me. Can I come back at you with something? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. If you have Matt Stafford, you might not be playing the Packers at, at that at that moment, right? That's like, that's, and the, that's idea. the difference between work and better. Like I think they're better, but if making it, you know, if it works, if this is the if this is to put them into the Super Bowl, if this is to put them in that spot, then. Uh, that is the difference to me. I actually have been a Matthew Stafford fan, and this is I'm embarrassed to say this, Doug, but when the trade happened it was the first time that then I started to question. And I was like, you know, because I always felt that, you know, Matthew Stafford in my mind was a, you know, top 50% quarterback in the National Football League. Talent-wise, probably top 10. Uh, actually, that's really not even maybe a question for, for the stuff that he can do. And then when it actually happened, I'm like, took a step back and I'm like okay where are they in the NFC and that's why I just was like I don't think they beat Green Bay in that game you know dude yeah but but hold on if 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 memory serves me Aaron Donald was hurt right that's the point yeah and I and I I, we talked about this on our show yesterday because this is a a big talking part about it as well I said it 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 actually is more about Aaron Donald's health than it is about maybe Matthew Stafford for you know, being there. Yeah, Stafford's a nice piece, but maybe the Rams just end up going as Aaron Donald goes instead well, I of... I think it's both. I think they, they don't feel like they were getting out of their offense what they could have gotten out of their offense with Jared Goff. Yeah, Jared Goff so wasn't bad against Green Bay. Like, he wasn't... He was he, with a broken thumb and, and you know, how many weeks off of surgery he was. Jared Goff wasn't the reason they lost to Green Bay by two touchdowns. Aaron Donald was the reason that they lost to Green Bay. Maybe the two um, so. work together. The one is responsible for the offensive side. One is the, the defensive side. So we're, we're, we're agreeing and disagreeing at the exact same time. Am I, am I making sense, Ryan, or, or am I talking in circles? I mean, I think you're making sense. I just think the idea is that you guys are having a disagreement. I think your point is with Matt Stafford, the Rams offense is probably better off in a better position. Dan mostly agrees with you, but his point is, I'm not sure if Matt Stafford would have even made a difference against the Packers. It mostly comes down to Aaron Donald. 
Like, if you want to, like, if you felt like was was Matthew Stafford the best that you were going to do this off season? Yes. And that and that's in. If you didn't want to, if you wanted to give up two first round picks for Matthew Stafford, that's fine. If you wanted to give up four for Deshaun Watson, are they you know better in that aspect? No. And and that you know could be something that we agree or disagree on. I would rather have Deshaun Watson than Matthew Stafford. You, you might, it, and and he's uh, so, twenty five year, twenty five years old, but. Again, like in the cost benefit analysis or whatever, like yeah. the I would say there's a marginal difference between the two. And I, I actually think Stafford's probably a better fit, even though Deshaun's obviously more mobile, uh, just because uh, because I think in terms of years in the NFL and fit for the style of offense, they feel like he's better. But regardless, they both have strong arms, both tough. They both play through injury. That's a wash. But there's a even if even if I would agree with you that okay Deshaun is better because he's younger so he'll be better for longer. I don't think there's that much of a difference as opposed to Deshaun Watson and Matt Stafford as opposed to Jared Goff. There is a massive difference. That that's really the point. Yeah, I, is that a fair assumption? Yeah, fair assumption? I, I I did not see any value in Goff anymore for the Rams. I don't see any value for Goff. Well, I Detroit, think there's an, there's there's one extra part of the Goff thing, and it's the reason that I. I laid it out in the first hour, and we'll talk about it next hour as well. Doug Gottlieb show here on Fox Sports Radio, live from the Farmers Insurance, Fox Sports Radio studios. Um, it's that one of the things that happens when you trade, you traded your quarterback, and I mean, think of what happened with Todd Gurley, right? Todd Gurley, and I don't know, I, I don't think I've shared this, but he, they believed he had a terrible work ethic. They thought he was he, he they thought he was a bad influence on some of the other guys. And he was making a ton of money. And when they got rid of him, they replaced him with Cam Akers. But they also believe they put people on notice. One, telling the offensive line, it's not all about you. We'll fix you. But two, some of it's about the running back. And it makes everybody like, look, if you're going to get cut Todd Gurley and pay him to not pay, what will they do with me? So it, it does. And they did the same thing with, with Jared Goff, which is like Jared Goff wasn't cutting it. Nobody argued that he cut it. He's the highest paid guy on the offensive side of the football. Let, let's move on. I, I think that the guys that stay, it energizes them that if you're only a part of this thing, if they think ultimately you're part of the solution. And I, I think there is a benefit to that. Now, they would have gotten the same benefit if they got Deshaun Watson. Um, the problem is that I, I just think the asking price is going to be, would be so ridiculous even if the Texans want to. And oh yeah, by the way, there's very limited value in those first round picks as opposed to the Jets' first round picks, which will be high first round picks, right? Like the Rams are always worst case scenario. I think with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and Matt Stafford, like you're talking early to mid twenties, worst case scenario. So I I think there's a difference in the value of those first round picks as well. 